Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Morales tutorial video. My name is Vasily, I'm your Web3 instructor, and today we are going to have a comparison between Morales Streams versus Web3.py. On the YouTube channel, we already have a video like this, but using Ether.js. Today, we are going to check the Pythonic version of this, using the Python Morales SDK, and of course, Web3.py. So, what Morales Streams are used for? Well, basically is to listen to blockchain events, such as a token transfer, such as maybe a NFT is minted, maybe an important transaction just happened on a smart contract you must know, or any other event you might think about. But why you should even care about this to begin with? Well, Morales Streams has a lot of use cases, such as crypto alerts, maybe you want to know when a whale makes a big transaction on a token you are a holder. Also, Web3 Gaming is just starting and it's probably going to be huge on the years coming, so you will want to give your players information when something important happens on the blockchain on your game. Also, NFTs are still relevant nowadays and maybe you will want to know when a NFT is minted or maybe when a certain NFT is transferred or sold. And also you can build automated bots for Twitter, for Discord, or actually any other web trick line you may think about. So for the comparison, we have in total nine items. First of all, both Web3.py and Morales streams allow us to listen to real-time events and to use multiple chains. And that's the only thing they have in common. We have different items here, such as having a specific filter for events, having 100% reliability, always coherent responses, multiple addresses, listen to a wallet address, and have first data. We are going to understand what each of one of these means during the video. So prepare yourself a snack and keep watching because we are just getting started. For today's demo, I have here on my Visual Studio Code two different scripts, one using Web3.py to listen to events, and another one using Morales Streams. Let's get started with the Web3.py version. We need to provide a HTTP provider URL, and this is the first weak point Web3.py has, basically because we are going to use services like Infura or Alchemy, which are both great, but the URLs they provide us works just for one blockchain. In this case, the Ethereum mainnet. And on the Morales side of things, we just have a unique API key, which is blockchain indifferent. Continuing with the code, we are setting up here a contract address, in this case USDT, one of the most popular stable coins out there. We are going to listen to the transfers of this USDT contract and using basic web tree library, we are creating a new contract providing the address of the contract and also the ABI. And by the way, if you don't know how to get the ABI, the application binary interface for a deployed contract, we can just go to etherscan over here. Here, as I already told you, we are using USDT, better known as Tether. And if we go to the contract tab, we can go down here and here we are going to have the contract API we can just copy. On my project, I already have a ab.json with that contract API. Down here, I have a function which is going to get the transaction received and is going to listen to this transfer event. And yes, using web3.py, we can filter which event we want to listen to. However, we cannot specify specific filters inside that event. Anyways, let's continue. Here I have some variables, which is going to take that response in order to get printed, such as the sender address, the receiver address, the value of that transaction, and the transaction hash. And finally, I have a new function here, which is going to use that event filter to loop and keep listening to any new events on the blockchain for this specific contract. So with that said, let's give this a try and see how it works. Here I'm going to use Python, transfers web3.py, click enter, and we must wait a little bit in order for this to work. 
After some seconds, we are getting those responses. Let me stop this, and as we can see here, we got the actual response we wanted, the information of the light transfer events for USDT. However, we have something interesting here. It's saying that we have an error during processing a mismatched ABI. Why this happen? Well, let's take the transaction hash over here. Let's go back to Etherscan and let's find this out. And as you can see here, let me make this bigger for you. This is the problem. Even if we are listening to these Tether transactions, USDT transactions, on this transaction hash, this wallet address didn't just send USDT, but also wrap it either. And as we are providing the contract ABI over here just for USDT, well, we are having this trouble here saying that there is a mismatch between the ABIs. And this is problematic if you think about that, because we cannot provide all the application binary interfaces for any smart contract out there. So using Web3.py, we have this problem. And this relates to the point of having always coherent responses. Because as you already saw, we can find ourselves in some troubles using Web3.py. But at the end of the day, this still works. And maybe with some troubles here and there, you might end up solving your problem. However, let's give a look to the Morales way of doing this and see the advantage of using Morales streams instead of just Web3.py. So here in my Visual Studio code, I have another script, as I already told you, called streams.py, and is using the Python SDK reference for Morales. If you haven't heard of this, please don't forget to give a look to the video description on which you are going to have all the documentation you are going to need for this project. So first of all, we are going to need to provide our API key from Morales. So if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to hit pause. Go to Morales.io, create your free account, and here in your admin panel on the stream section, you can just copy your API key. Of course, as storing API keys on the code constitutes a security risk, I already transformed mine into an environment variable. Also, we need a URL of our webhook. To create this webhook, I'm using here a Django project, which is using ngrock to create this URL. And again, don't forget to check out the links in the description if you want to learn how to accomplish this. So, we are also using the same ABI because it's the same contract. And here is the important part. First of all, we have to provide the webhook URL, the one we already set it up here. A description, it could be whatever you want. In this case, for me, it's USDT 50 transfers. A tag, USDT 50. The topic, here we have to specify the specific event we want to listen to. In this case, it's transfer, and transfer gets three parameters, the sender and the receiver, and also a uint to 56 of the value. Here we have all the addresses. All the addresses is a parameter which is only available for pro accounts, and this allows us to listen to all the contracts on a specific chain. We are not using it now. Also, we can include the native transactions. We don't want them either. Include the contract logs. Here on the contract logs is where the actual events happens for the transfers between addresses. So. We are setting this to true and include internal transaction again is something we are not going to use for this demo. The ABI is going to be the ABI again. I already show you we have here and we have some advanced options. And this is when Morales take a big advantage in comparison to Web3.py. And the reason is because we can have a filter here. So maybe I don't want to listen to all the transactions which are happening on USDT, but just the ones who has high value. And this is very important because again, remember this response we have over here. We got transaction over transaction over transaction, and this might become a trouble for us really soon because maybe all this information might saturate our servers. 
And using a filter like this one, we are ensuring ourselves we are getting a small amount of responses and more focused on a specific result. Also, we are specified in here the chain IDs. We can use multiple blockchains here. This is the code for Ethereum, but we can add a lot more of EVM compatible blockchains. Again, all with the same API key. This is really cool. And well, all this code was to create a new stream, which is going to give us a response. And something we need is the stream ID, which came on that result. Using that stream ID, we are now setting up here the contract address we want to listen to. Again, we are using USDT and using the Morales API endpoint add address to stream. Well, we are adding this address to our newly created stream. So let's run this and see what happens. Let's go back to my terminal on a new tab and let's run this Python streams.py. Let's hit enter. As you can see here, we got the actual response of that stream being created and also the new address being added to that stream over here. And you might be wondering, where is the actual response? Well, as I already told you, I'm using a webhook using Django and NGROC. So here on my Django server, I got the actual response. And as you can see here, this looks great because this information is better formatted rather than the ones I, we have over here. And also we are just getting the information of this transaction with higher values. Let me put myself on the other side of the screen and make this a little bigger for you. This keeps updating and we have even more information we got on the web3.py response with a really good format. And as you can see here, we, don't, we are not getting those strange warnings we had earlier with web3.py telling us the ABI is, was incompatible or something like that. So let's go back again to our comparison. I'm going to disappear from the screen and let's check this out. Well, we have a specific filters. As you saw, we set up a minimum amount for the transaction to be shown. is 100% reliable because again, we are not using different services, just one API key, which is blockchain different, always had coherent responses because again, we are not getting any warning or strange problem over here. We can use multiple addresses. I just added this USDT, but I could just execute this with another address. So we can listen to different address at the same time. And also we have parsed data, which just means that the data representation is really good. And as you can see here, all the data is on a string format. And here on web3.py, well, we have some values such as the transaction value as an integer, but that's not all. Yes, we used this script to create a new stream from scratch and then just add our contract address over here. But Morales actually has a Web3 interface we can interact with. Let's give that a check. So let's go back to my streams. As you can see here, my stream is not appearing yet. This is because I haven't restarted the page. I have my actual stream. So I can go here, click on edit, and I have all the information on a really nice interface, such as the address for USDT. We can add another address over here. We have the description, the webhook URL, the tag. We can select the network. For now, we were just using Ethereum, but look at this immense amount of EVM compatible blockchains we can use on Morales. We have this address activity. Again, I already explained this. The contract interactions were the ones we wanted, but we can also listen to native transactions or internal transactions. And here we already have the contract ABI we provided by code. The topic we want to select is the transfer. And this is really nice because maybe you are not 100% sure all the events are specific as smart contract emits, but here you are going to have them all and you just can check the ones you want. And also we have the advanced options here on which we have the transactions, which has a value equal or higher than this one. 
And this is it for today's comparison. As you can see, Morales Streams has a lot of advantages against Web3.py. It's really versatile, easy to use. It also has a Web3 interface if you want to just quickly create a new stream and start listening to a specific smart contract and is very user friendly. And yes, you might still want to use Web3.py for some specific use cases, but if you want to listen to the blockchain events in the pro way, Morales is the solution for you. That was it for today's video. Don't forget all the code we use for this lesson is on the description on the GitHub link, so don't forget to check it out. And as you are already here, click over here to subscribe, turn on the notifications, and also click on our Morales Web3 channel, on which you are going to find a lot of interesting Web3 resources to learn how to integrate Morales into your applications and also nice Web3 content in general.